I'm Tejas Kumar, and I've been building on the web for over 20 years at places like Vercel, Spotify, Zeta, and more. I'm also the author of a book called Fluent React, and that book is, is available on Amazon, um, and everywhere books are sold. If you're interested, you can go look it up um, here and, and maybe buy it. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today, we're here to talk about React and getting the most out of React through its concurrent features, specifically use deferred value and use transition. And you might be thinking, okay, why does that matter? And that's because performance matters. Like when people are able to get things done on the web faster, they're more likely to actually convert and affect your business positively. This is not a new idea. There's an article called Milliseconds Make Millions um, on web.dev from 2020, four years ago, making the case for performance on the web and how it converts. So I'd encourage you to read that. In any case, um, let's talk about how we can in increase performance using React's concurrent features, okay? To understand that, we need to understand a little bit about how React works under the hood. So let's explore that. You may have heard of the term fiber architecture from React 16 onwards. Let's start before React 16 and understand how React goes in the service of making user updates faster with minimal requirement of overhead for developers through powerful abstraction, okay? So let's let's go a little bit back in time to understand these mechanisms that give birth to the concurrent features that give us performance benefits today. Um, so before React 16, the way React used to do updates on the screen was using an algorithm that was based on a stack data structure. So let's look at that and understand why this was later replaced with fiber. So if we come here, to Excalibur, let's just draw a stack. This is a stack. You have a you have a big um, container, so to speak, and in your container you have UI updates. So you have um, update image, and you have show loading indicator, right? Show loading. In this is maybe like an avatar upload or something. Show loading indicator, and then you have um, let's say save, and then you have um, hide, loading, whatever. We're just making this up. But what I want to show you is it's a stack. What that means is if there's some expensive operation, then these are going to be blocked until that can be popped off the stack, right? A stack is fundamentally a last in, first out. So the last thing in is the first thing out. And only then can you get to these updates here. And the problem with that is if saving was a higher priority update than whatever this is, saving won't happen. It'll be blocked before this update gets processed. You know, Stacks are not efficient for UI updates because UI updates are not created equal. Some things, in this case, maybe save, let's mark it as red, are more urgent than the other things. Let's mark expensive as green. And so this is a problem. This was the problem with the stack reconciler. And this is why React needed the fiber architecture from React 16. Okay, what is the fiber architecture? The main data structure switches from a stack to a tree. So with the fiber architecture, you've got a tree. Let's let's draw a little fiber tree. So let's say you have the let's say you have the root of the tree, which is your, I don't know, like your your main component. Main. Um, and in your main you've got some some children, right? You've got a, a div. And inside the div, you've got maybe an h1 and a span, span, and a button, right? And this is really, it, it's literally a tree. And you can maybe give them some meaning. So h1 will be like welcome. Um, span will be, I don't know, like a counter, right? So count is an expression like this. And the button is an increment button. Look, it's a tree. Um, this could be a fiber tree. In fact, let's wrap it up in a big rectangle and call this one the current fiber tree, okay? Um, fiber architecture allows using a technique called double buffering from the game world, where you have two buffers of the current state and the next state, and you can either throw away the next state if a higher priority update comes in, or you can switch the current state to the next state seamlessly. If this sounds a little bit abstract, let's it'll become more clear as we keep drawing. So assume we have two buffers or two states of the UI, one that's currently in the browser, and, and, and this is difficult, one that's currently in the browser and another that's not. So this next fiber tree, let's call it the alternate fiber tree. This is not yet in the browser. This is like a state updated. We could say, for example, somebody clicked increment and here count is zero, here count is one, but this has not yet made it to the screen. 
okay? And at the core of React's fiber architecture is a hidden fiber root node. So let's draw that here, fiber root node. Nobody sees this, nobody interacts. This is an implementation detail in React. And at any given point in time, this points to the current fiber tree. And if we wanted to switch to use the alternate fiber tree, we would just flip a pointer to point to this one instead. And then the next state is now the authoritative state. And we effectively swap, this becomes alternate, this becomes current. In fact, this is not exactly how it works. Um, and of course, implementation details will change over time, but this is the gist of it. There's a pointer that points to one of two buffers. The cool thing about this is the update work of changing count from zero to one is never committed to the screen unless and until this pointer changes. So until this happens, this work can just exist like off the screen and it can be thrown away if a new higher priority update comes in. So they could literally just be like, I don't want this anymore. I'm going to have a new alternate fiber tree where the heading changed. Maybe that's higher priority, right? Maybe this is a higher priority. And so maybe that update can happen and then you switch the pointer to that while the count incrementing can happen later. So it's the fiber architecture, the big TLDR, if you take away nothing from this, is that the fiber architecture delivers a sense of priority and allows React to schedule updates appropriately. Okay, let's let's pause from that and now just talk about like priorities in updating user interfaces. What things are more or higher priority than what other things? That's the question. For example, if you have a text input field, it is the highest priority that when you type in the text input field, it updates, right? And if that field filters on something, the stuff it filters on, so the list can change later, it doesn't matter. It's important when you go to interact with a user interface, it responds to you, it reacts to you instantly. Otherwise it feels laggy. Input delay is like the enemy of everything good on the web. So high priority update is your input field updating to reflect your keystroke. Low priority update is any list processing that happens as a result of that. High priority, low priority. To make this more clear, let's create an example. So, and, and it's a contrived example, but I think contrived examples are actually great for teaching mechanism. So we have a code sandbox here. And what we're gonna do is create a really long list. So let's just start by making a mock. Let's say um, we have a form and we have a label. Um, filter, and the label contains an input type text. Um, we'll just draw some UI here. We'll do this, and we'll, we'll do slash form, just like that. This looks great. Um, maybe, it, maybe it looks great. That's a discussion for another day. And then we'll um, add a huge list of numbers. So we'll do UL, LI. Um, let's just do math.random for now and UL here like that. Okay, cool. We just need to reproduce this like many, many, many times. So let's say, for example, we have a big list of numbers. Const huge list equals array.from length 10,000. And we'll map over that to various math.random values, just like that. And then instead of one list element, we'll do huge list.map item. And instead of math.random will return the item. Of course, this crashes, that's kind of the point. But let's take a look. Now, filtering on this will produce some jank, ideally. If it doesn't, we'll just keep adding to this to make it produce some jank, okay? So let's have some state. Const filter, set filter is use state of nothing. And we'll just bind the input here. So value is filter. You've written this a million times, I'm sure. On change e e dot oh, set filter e dot target dot value okay so now if we look at this let's take a look so filtering so if i do like actually our list is not filtered so we'll filter it here dot filter i and we'll say i string i dot includes filter okay so now let's try let's try one two three this is pretty fast ish, let's maybe make this like 30,000 and really crash the browser. Okay. Gosh. Okay. So now I'm going to type one and quickly pull back my hand. So, so we'll do one. Yeah, this is definitely slower Two. It takes a long time to update. Yuck. And this is the problem. Yuck. This is so painful to use. This is the problem with synchronous rendering. So let's, let's opt into concurrent rendering now using two hooks. We'll start with use deferred value. 
What is use deferred value? Use deferred value is exactly like debounce, right? Where with a debounce, you hold off on any, if, if many operations happen in rapid succession, you cancel the most recent one for the new one with a timeout. So debounces rely on timeouts to cancel previous executions. With use deferred value, instead of an arbitrary number of milliseconds like you would with a debounce, the time function is, re is determined by React Scheduler. What that means is how busy am I as React rendering? If I have some free cycles, then I will update the deferred value. If I'm too busy rendering other stuff, I'm not going to update the deferred value. And then we use this updated deferred value to filter the list. And because we're recomputing the list only when the deferred value changes, we do it at a more opportune time for performance. So use deferred value is like debounce, except instead of a timeout, it's relying on the React scheduler. Okay, so let's, how would we do that? So what we wanna do is recompute this only when the deferred value changes. However, a big problem here is whenever filter changes, all of this will re-render anyway. So let's fix this by factoring this out into a memoized component. So we'll say const list is this, and we'll actually wrap this whole thing in memo from React. So now, unless it's props change, it never re-renders. Finally, we'll make filter a prop, just like that. And then we'll come here and render, gosh, this is a JavaScript, I just realized. List filter is, is filter, okay. Great, so now, as long as it's prop changes, it will still update and this will not be performant probably. Yeah, this is really not performant. Look at that, I pressed backspace and it's taking forever. So if we defer this update, the component will become more performant. So we can say const deferred filter is use deferred value of filter. That's it. And now, instead of passing filter to this, we pass deferred filter, meaning we update the input because we're calling set filter and its value is filter, this is updated instantly, but deferred filter is only updated when React has enough cycles. So if we do one, two, three, look at that. This, that you'll notice a significant difference in how fast the text field updates versus how fast the list updates. You see that? This is also called, in some contexts, time slicing. So we've already got some great perceived performance improvements here using use deferred value. And this is indeed the like prime use case for use deferred value. Okay, how does use call use transition, excuse me, that's the other concurrent feature, use transition. How does that work? When would you use them? Let's talk about that. Use transition is used not for a value, but for a state update. So if you want to defer a state update um, later, then you would use transition. So let's assume our huge list is held in state. So we can say const um, state list, set state list, and its initial state is huge list. And we want to set state list to the filtered value. This is really bad. We shouldn't do this, but in any case, um, we set filter. Let's add an effect. Let's get rid of this, and let's comment this out. Let's so let's add an effect. Use effect. Okay. And what we want is when filter changes, then we se we set state list to be um, huge list dot filter. Right. Filter um, item string of item includes filter. So we're doing this state update. And then here, we don't pass deferred filter, we don't pass anything. But we actually turn the prop into the list. So um, instead of filter, we'll say list, and we say list. And we don't filter here because we're filtering in the effect. I hope this is clear so far. Okay. And finally, list is state list save that. So what we did was we just do a state update. Now this will still be slow. So you'll notice the text input is blocked, right? Because it doesn't have a sense of priority. That's really lame. Um, we can wrap this and use transition to help. So we'll, the API of use transition is is pending and then start transition. We call use transition here. And if we update, if we add this state update inside start transition, like this. Now, this state update has a lower priority while filter still changes. And we have is pending. So we'll talk about that in a second. So now let's save this and come here. And what we'll see is the text input, once again, updates much faster than the list. And again, we have this great boost in perceived performance. Look at that. Incredible. 
Okay, finally, um, let's use is pending. So we can say even just above the list div ready. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. And we can change this ready to is pending, 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 loading. Otherwise, ready. Just like that. Look at that. So now I can, incredible. You see that? You see that awesome perceived performance? Incredible. That is the value of React's concurrent features. I hope this has shown you a number of things. I hope this has shown you how React works under the hood. I hope this has shown you the trade-offs with the stack and fiber reconcilers, how the how moving from a stack to a tree helps, and also how to take advantage of concurrent features in your applications to improve perceived performance. Once again, um, this is covered in my book, Fluent React, Fluent React, if you'd like to purchase it. Um, also, if you want to learn more, I have a website, tage.as, where you can learn from my podcast, which I encourage you, but also you can ask questions to my book just right here. You could be like, uh, explain use deferred value. And what it will do is it will give you basically my talk. It's a feature within React's concurrent mode and so on and so forth, um, basically giving you the talk that I gave you. So with that, I want to thank you for watching and listening thus far. I hope this has been helpful and I can't wait to see how you use these things. I'm happy to take any questions you have in the comments or wherever you want to leave questions, including on social media. Thank you for being a part of this.